You've really got to be careful here. So if you want to survive this, keep quiet about what you're doing, be disciplined, and expect a tax, tax, attack vector to come on you. about crypto we see yeah. in the long term that that's still going to come and happen and again it's a status game it's statism uh and it's going to be the central banking cartel so we buy it because it's going up not because we love it this is the dispassionate wealth building approach you have to have uh you should have had the military industrial complex if you had lockheed martin you would have made about 40 times your money uh, over the last 15 years you should have been in uh the tech Magnificent Seven, you also would have done brilliantly. That's part of the military industrial complex. It's the tech division of it, the surveillance division of it, the Mossad, if you want, division of... of a lot of those companies are funded by intelligence agencies, actually. Correct. And, and, were, and were started as small, um, what do they call them, uh, skunk works out of yes. other big tech companies. Exactly. And yeah. launched out of it. And with the, you're going to focus on this part of getting this achieved. And they well, let's let's work. touch on the XRP real quick because I know a lot of listeners are just curious on your perspective, a macro perspective too, on it, and just the analysis on the, tra the charts. So, oh, you, even a price prediction range, maybe if you could, um, for this bull cycle, because um, you know, my you know, Francis, that different asset classes can be simultaneously at different stages within the cycle. So, for example, the stock market is in a huge bubble. We're talking about the equities stock market. But majority of altcoins or cryptocurrencies are in the uh, early markup to accumulation phase because a lot of digital assets and cryptos are still 50 to 80% below their all-time high, which means there's a lot of room for growth as they pump liquidity into the markets and stable coin liquidity rises 100% and we are in on we have we have actually said an altcoin run is coming and bitcoin dominance is going to fall so i know you want me to cover xrp i kind of feel that's jumping to the end game before i take you through a whole narrative but you might not have the time to do the whole narrative bitcoin dominance has, so far has actually been the driver of this crypto market outside of sol and ton in the macro caps i'm not talking about micros uh, I tend not to play too much there. It's actually been a Bitcoin dominance. We called from the 30s, around about 37%, and you've had 55% on Bitcoin dominance so far. Now we are overall, it's just worth showing you this chart, actually, just at least once so that everybody has a look at this. We've actually made a macro call that's going to upset a lot of um, uh, maxis. We say you're very close to getting to that point where you are going to have a change in dominance quite substantially this yeah. is a technical uh setup we're seeing one more little spill on i've inverted this chart by the way so if you feel bullish this chart you are feeling like me that this is going to lead to a major up move at some point so what we're actually saying before we cover xrp specifically and its technical case is that there will be a turning i think we're going to get a final spill so mini surge one more time maybe out of Bitcoin, then we're breaking out of this falling wedge. The red lines are always the lines we expect to have broken for the next major move. So we have a beautiful first impulse. I want to highlight. So this is inverted Bitcoin dominance. So it's almost like everything else dominance uh, chart in normal way round. OK, so it doesn't matter how you uh, figure it. And, and you can see the up legs have real powerful moves. So when you have an alt run, Bitcoin's market cap shrinks relative to the total expansion of the pie quite violently. However, it's come down on the down legs when Bitcoin is dominant, which is the bear market. It goes down 70 percent and some of the alts have gone down 85 or 90 has become more moderated. So it's clear that there's bigger projects with longer standing histories now. They aren't being dumped as much. So what you're actually having is technically we're seeing um, more calm down legs and more violent up legs in this chart. So again, you don't have to think about this as an inverted chart of Bitcoin dominance. Think of it as the normal way around of all the other tokens dominance over Bitcoin. So we see a breakout of this to the upside that's going to take Bitcoin dominance from around 55 to around 40%. We see possibly another pullback period 
and then we see this uh, t transpiring. And now whether all of this, that's going to be a run below 20 for Bitcoin dominance. Now, I don't think that all happens in this one cycle. So we, we might only do this part and get and the cycle might end. Or we're going to have an extended cycle because of dollar collapse, UBI issuance. So if they go the full reset, that can happen in between in the normal bear years, the bear market years. Actually, we could have these these uh, alt tokens running consistently uh, and that people have to get out of the they've been trained into four year cycles and bear market, bull markets, and they stick to it quite religiously. If we have the whole debt market collapsing in between and they repurposing the crypto market to be the railway track for the new system, you could be running when normally you've been bare. Yeah. So you have to bear that possibility in mind. But we see that Bitcoin dominance eventually uh, getting to sub 20, which means a lot of other tokens, typically the big caps, I don't think this is, shitcoin number 977 that's going to be doing it it's all your big market caps that are already established that are going to drive on home you know before google was a trillion market cap it was a hundred billion market cap it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a nothing penny stock um mm -hmm. so it's going to be the big guys that do that that means you're talking about that top 10 list that top 15 list which includes solana which includes uh, xrp it includes bmb it includes Ethereum, it includes uh, Ton, it includes uh, one or two just outside the top 10, like Tron and uh, a couple of others. Uh, so those tokens are going to be the ones when they double that do the most damage to that Bitcoin dominance. So overall, there's, a, there's going to be many things that are needed. And there are many different projects that are looking after the different things. Just like there isn't one tech company, we're actually for the dark state. They're also mm -hmm. not going to have one major crypto winner. There's going to be a few. Uh, so I don't want everyone to just be totally narrow and only XRP. But without yes. doubt, uh, XRP token is actively caught, courted the central bankers for its system and its rails uh, that they want to bring to bear. And that, without doubt, is going to be a large part of what is going to be needed in the event of a new money system. That's so, right. The guys are absolutely right to be talking and asking about XRP. So that brings us back to the XRP USD chart. But just don't be mono. Don't be the new maxi because there's going to be a lot of alts that are going to be killing um, Bitcoin's dominance. We teach people to have a very diversified portfolio. That's something we do in our courses. Just we're, we're so fixated on XRP to a degree because I think it becomes the solution to all these issues in the banking system. And of course, the rails for the new monetary system. There's enough evidence to confirm that Bitcoin's origins can actually be traced to the government, the National Security Agency. And then who's the largest holder of Bitcoin? It is the United States government. And it's possible that this was even there to pave the way for the acceptance of the idea, the concept of digital money to begin with. There's also SHA-256. That's the National Security Agency white paper on how to mint a digital currency. So I just wanted to throw that out there. 100% and those those facts of information is something that we continue to remind people of all the time. The notion that there's a clean, libertarian, anti-government, anti-Bolshevik, totalitarian surveillance finance business in there that's working for you is a fooled one. They've created these rails for the purpose that they want them for, not for your liberty and freedom, for their control and for their ownership of all assets and the reduction of everyone else who's not part of the insider group to being uh, essentially plantation slave. So, I mean, we've got to, ex we've got to ex accept that, you know, there's insiders and outsiders, there's a club and you ain't in it and neither am I, I'm afraid. So this is the XRP chart that you're asking for. Uh, I've, I've made it a bit uh, broad, Debs, I wanted to show the targets, but let's just highlight what an excellent candle that actually happens to be generally. Yes, this should be an alt run. Yes, it should have done much more. Yes, it's been dull. The SEC capped the last bull cycle. It's all perfect for what we call an HVF. You mentioned that I'm the founder of the Hunt Volatility Funnel Trading Method. The most interesting setups for me are setups that give us this level of structure and by the way if you want an example where it's previously occurred in xrp here's one for you 
That's the 2014 to 2017 period where XRP actually had a low somewhere here of not even 2%, two, no, 2.3% of a cent. So it was 3% of a cent here, 0 0.003 something. Um, so it was 3% of a cent and then ran to over $3. I think the high here was 3.31. So 3% of a cent means you had to go up another 90, you had to go up to get to 100% 30, uh, 33 times. And then you got to one cent. And then you had to go from one cent to $3.31. That's another uh, uh, 33 times again to get, no, sorry, 333 times to get there. So extreme low to extreme high. No one would have bought the extreme low. No one would have sold the extreme high. But just so that you understand, that is the, the making of man in terms of balance sheets. Even if you'd had a grand in there, you've done unbelievably well and you're talking seven digits. Now, you're probably not going to get that again. Things move there most early on. You just have to look at that Bitcoin cycle on the macro charts. It's like this when you use a log scale chart. Very strong in the beginning and then rolling over. It's harder to move multi-billion market caps than it is to move uh, micro caps. Um, however, moving to this setup that we find ourselves in, and what was beautiful, just, just to finish on the previous, how did we do? Well, you got out over here, um, and then you got another setup, and you should have got back in on a smaller time frame over there. And then you got out over there again. So using HVF method, you would have been in long, uh, you would have got out there, long there, got in again there, and got out there. We do have a basis for overperformance. I don't want to confuse you. So I'll just say we got out. You wouldn't have got 100% out. You would have done a partial closure. But anyway, um, that's how it's performed so far on XRP as a calling mechanism. And now you have a far bigger and longer buy structure. The bigger the structure, the bigger the move. By time duration and by, in the absolute sense, if not in the percentage sense, the, the difference between the high one up top here at $3.31 all the way down to the lowest point in the structure, which was 11 cents. So let's just say it was $3.33 and that, then 11 cents. You can see that to get to from 11 cents to $3.33, that's a 30x. Uh, the math is almost perfect. Um, and, you, you know, it's uh, quite, quite some move. So to get back up there. So from high to low, that's a big, big move. Now, this structure is getting to the point where we feel it's made its third high. So we look for descending moves of high. The third is often very subtle and quite a bit lower. You see it here. But then you go flat and dull and boring for a while, which is kind of what you did. This is known as the funnel the squeeze. So those guys that make protein shakes, you put your powder in at the top where it's big and you don't miss and it squeezes it down into the the, the tight bottleneck of your, um, your drink uh, bottle receptacle. So we are getting the same structure here. This three is much more flatter and much more calmer after some pretty wild moves as we've already discussed. So where does this leave and so what? Well, the current month is a major rejection candle. It's a major rejection candle. You have quite a long wick. You bounced on a funnel level of a little structure we had in there on a much lower time frame. I don't want to take you into the weeds too deep. Uh, I'll go to a weekly and just focus on the current structure. I just wanted to show you the original one back in 214 through to 17. That's three years. This is 2017 to 24. This is one hell of a time frame all in one major technical pattern. So the date there, what was it? 1st of January. Okay, it's a weekly. So 1st of January, call it from the beginning of 18, and we're now in uh, 2024. This is six years of price behavior awaiting a breakout. The longer, the better uh, the breakout, the bigger the squeeze and the calmness. So overall, the expectation on the structure, and I will draw it for you. We have uh, a tool that we give to our community members now that have been with us for minimum of a year so that you can see for yourself um, the targets that we currently are anticipating as possible. And remember, we have overperformance criteria, and we would expect that in this instance. 
So we wouldn't do a full closure, we'd do a partial closure, but that is giving a $19.35 for uh, XRP. That's this, and, this cycle, assuming this cycle continues to... Careful improve. now, you're superimposing something. There could be, hmm. I've already hinted it's possible that the crypto cycle is different this time because we have a reset and the banks collapse. So you could have a continuous non-bear cycle, which could be sideways, it could be mildly up, it could be strongly up, even though we've passed the Bitcoin halvening. We're already seeing a reduced significance. We need to, we used to have to have Bitcoin going up for the rest to go up, even if it goes up slowly or at least holds its own. This dominance, this God market syndrome around Bitcoin is going to dissipate slowly. Yep. And we, we also, if you're calling 20% Bitcoin dominance, it's quite likely there could be a flippening, but it could be any token that could flip in it or more than one. So it yeah. may not even be the largest token because I think there'll still be a concentration of the most significant tokens for doing this. I don't think we're going to go into a horde of, we're not going to have a hundred tokens that all become 50 billion market caps. There's going to be, the, the resources are going to come behind a few. We normally face an oligopoly. You just have to look at it. You have iPhone, Android, and you had Nokia for a while. There's two, three, four, maybe. You look at the tech companies. We're talking about Magnificent 7. We're not talking about the Magnificent 67. Um, so I think there's a case when you talk about the, the fall below 20%. And I just want to put an alert to that. That's not tomorrow or next week. It could be. It's most likely to be, in my opinion, not even this cycle, but potentially at the back end of the next cycle, assuming we continue to have those cycles as we do. If we no longer have those cycles, we don't do a bear market and there's just a continual rush into this new platform and uh, the money running out of debt as the debt collapses starts running into these special projects and they go instead of being they go up more than NVIDIA and tech companies through the across the cycle, you're going to see overnight wealth but do they want you to get overnight wealthy probably no how might they hurt you and shake you out a demand destroying event which is i take you back to the macro where i showed you yield curve inversion i showed you copper collapse as indicator divided by gold and i showed you uh, unwinding of the yen carry trade taking place institutional stress all of which point to institutional stress so they could do a mid cycle hammer that takes you out because you leverage or because you can't hold they create economic stress they force you to sell your crypto to meet your rent checks because your business gets closed uh, imagine you had another cv19 nobody's keeping their xrp portfolio if they can't feed their kids so that's why i say get the debt instruments out of your life with the surge they don't want you to participate in the bull market they don't want too many of you to make it so they might engineer a situation so there is an x factor a wild card there's a vampire in the room still and you can't sleep sound on this next alt run until you know whether the where the vampire is and when he might come out the closet so i just want to leave that as a, a little warning uh, here, not absolutely everything happens this cycle that we're predicting. It's an open prediction that's going to come, but this is getting to the business end of the breakout. We have a third high, we have a third low. This is our um, alert. I'll put it on right here. When you start getting to 82 cents, you're getting ready to go. If you take this top out, it was, I think, a 95, just under 95, 947. That makes dollar a very interesting level. And that means you're probably in a breakout mode. At the moment, we're crossing the funnel, which is quite a wide funnel. Don't forget, you dipped as low as 37 here and as high as 97 there. So you've got a 60 cent funnel to bounce around in, stay calm, and you can muck about in here for a fair while. This is not a call tomorrow. We don't give a date. We give a level. That's the value. You can put an order on. It costs you nothing. Get me right. long at 95, 97, or one dollar. Stop loss. I wouldn't have the dollar at 37. I would do smaller time frame technicals and get a tighter stop. Nineteen dollars, uh, 35. I would close 50% of the position. There could be a case made 
that with a uh, if this has some flag dy dynamics and you get a run as big as the pre the previous setup run on a log scale basis, you could be looking at really big numbers, 127, 670. Those are crazy numbers. Um, but people don't realize that you could get to trillion market caps in um, the monorails of the new system. Why? Agreed. Because everybody's going to need to use it. If you are one of the gifted tokens, and there always has to be a fake choice. Okay, XRP and XLM, for example. And we, we mentioned how uh, an insider informed us that you know, one nation said if they that country, Middle Eastern nation said that country went XRP, they'd go XLM. It's kind of right. like, hey, it's Pepsi or it's Coca-Cola. Either way, you're drinking sugar water, you know, uh, corn syrup, sugar water. Um, but you think you've got a choice. Yeah. You know? So it's a very good point you made, too. And thank you for clarifying that, because we, we've speculated something like that as well before. So. And we believe in the liquidation event that will take will give the insiders the venture capitalists and the the ones in charge of the new system an opportunity to flush out a lot mm -hmm. of people that are over leveraged your retail people just eliminate as many people as possible so they could scoop it up cheap before they pump it up to the moon basically yeah it's i have a another point to make on that the other way, those that do survive, so let's say you're super disciplined, you don't have debt, you're not going to be interest rate spiked out of your house, your car, it, let's assume it was on variable, or they renege on the fixed, and they pull all sorts of tricks, you've got no debt, you've said, I'm locking up that crypto, I'm not being shaken out, it's going to run, they're going to try to shake me out, I'm holding it, uh, for example, and you do all of these things. Um, another way they get you will be don't forget they are going to the governments what do governments do like trump will be forced to do when he gets in which is i'm pretty sure what will happen what do they do when they have no income and they can't issue more debt because the market is not accepting the debt they want higher interest rates taxes yeah exactly and who and what is the easiest things to tax fix property so your home your house they flush as many people out of their houses. So there's a bigger group of people on the outside looking in. They resent you as a property owner where they used to be. They can't. They have to rent now. And they cheer for tax increases on the rich overlording class. So you mentioned uh, something that was fascinating. They, the, 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 the dark state hate the middle classes, the people that survive, the smart. The Bolshevik revolution killed the bourgeois classes. Those were the farmers that built wealth and made food. They destroyed their productive capacity and they murdered them. There's even a, a beautiful dog that was a Russian dog and it was kept by a lot of the middle classes. It's kind of like an Afghan. I don't want to say the name because it's got almost a French standing. They slaughtered the dog as well as the families and the children it's because scary. of the symbolism of the middle classdom and academia and smart Russian society. They literally removed all intellectualism and just kept the peasants. It's very That's sad. how evil they are. You represent, you two, smart kids, uh, calling you kids, sorry, smart men, gentlemen of the many, <laughs> compared to me, everyone's become a kid. You know you're getting older when you start talking like that. Um, uh, smart men, you are an en the biggest enemy. You're dangerous. The people that are all yay Trump and going to go vote, the, the weaponized evangelicals that are, they are, they are they're perfect. They're totally under control. They're going to go vote Trump. They're going to, they're going to relax their guys in power and they're going to be shocked and suddenly taken aback by events. That's perfect. That's what they want. And they all react emotionally. Uh, it's perfect. You, they, you know, those are the guys that eat with their hands. They actually killed cutlery you, to, to not be seen as, um, a, a, a middle class you had to eat with your hands you have to sit and dip with your foods and all of that in russian society it's almost like you have to play peasant to not be attack vectored by the bolshevism so you've really got to be careful here so if you want to survive this keep quiet about what you're doing um be disciplined yeah. and expect attacks attack attack vector to come on you and we spoke about property but they're going to come for your crypto they've had three or four cycles now of this 
It's you true. Know, they are much better. And the key thing about our community, and this sounds like a plug, so I apologize because I'm Gen X. I hate people selling to me, et cetera. But we have real means out of America for people to offboard from a, a nation state crypto into a same national state bank. Totally agreed and happy. The bank knows the crypto platform. The crypto platform knows the bank. You can sell your alt profits. You can then transfer it. It's not a high liquidity exchange. This is just an offboarding off ramp. But nobody, most guys in crypto don't have the off ramp. And it comes, you can get the tax residency of that nation state for which there is a zero capital gains. So you can come as a foreigner. It's a small nation. And you can say, I'm interested. I want to get rid of my slave plantation owner and I might come under you. What are you doing for me? They say, for you, my friend, no capital gains, none of these things. You be tax resident here. All you have to do is X, Y, Z. And we are getting our community members ready to hold on to using their own legal system that these guys use. Corporations, a combination of tax residencies and multitudes of optionality. Yeah. So that you can offboard your ill-gotten gains in the collapse of the debt, in the reflation of the great crypto as a result. And that's what um, you both said. I don't want to sound nihilistic and black pill. The bigger the crisis, I did a lot of crisis talking, the bigger the opportunity. This super drives the potential of this. You've got to inflate. You've got a beach ball that needs inflating to the size of Jupiter that I'm saying Jupiter's blow blowing, blowing up. So you can even say, oh, he's a very negative guy. Jupiter's blowing up. Or you can listen to the second half where I say everything that was held in the dark star needs to be reflated into a new system in that beach ball. And I'm telling you that where it is and where it's got to go. So that's a whole bunch of inflation that needs to go on that could dwarf every other move before it. You need right. trillion market caps, not just one. You need a few. I think yeah. that's going to happen because money always moves from one asset class to the other. Like anymore. energy. Yeah. Well, that's what the central like banks know. Energy. <laughs> it yeah. finds its level. It flows. Exactly. It does, nothing disappears. Energy doesn't go. You know, you break in your car, you're creating heat. <laughs> uh, and heat gets re can be reconverted back to energy. And nothing dies in the, the world. We are The biggest lie is that we have scarcity. Yeah. We actually oh, can yeah. feed everyone. We could feed a much bigger population if we were efficient Agreed. Agreed. and we had no vampires uh, in the society. In actual fact, there's places where you don't get humans for a huge amount of debt. We could all fit into Kansas, the whole world, shoulder to shoulder. There's more chickens on this planet than there are humans. Yeah, I mean, so, but uh, that's not <laughs> to say we have the same footprint as a chicken, but I'm just trying to say there's an overpopulation and a lot of people watching the BBC with our uh, aging old guy, what's his name, Attenborough, he's totally captured. And, you know, he's a population whiff, uh, you know, a genderist. So there's a lot of people totally captured. I would love us to be more efficient. I would love us to do less damage to the planet, but it's usually corporations. Do you think this bombing of uh, that's gone on in Gaza and the smoke that comes out of there, the bombing of the Houthis and all of this warfare does for the environment? You never hear them talking about that. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's you. It's your it's you eating steak that's doing it. I was saying this in our last podcast we did is that the issues that we're talking about now are being exploited by the one percenters to fit into the new agendas. And they're, I'm, I'm referring to the climate change agenda. We're in a situation where they can use these issues and pretty much promote the idea now of minimalism, reducing your consumption because it's environmentally friendly and beneficial. And that's basically the, the mechanism that they'll have to, as means to control more of our freedoms and personal liberties. A hundred percent. It's just mm -hmm. turning off these lows. And we've done a lot of analysis on this. And this is very close to historic lows, uh, XRP dominance, right back to when the first big move occurred. So you can see it's, a, it's the great unloved, apart from when it listed uh, in the 30th of June, 2014. So if you just take that, that, those are our low levels, the blue line and the red line. That's the midpoint, believe it or not. This is a log scale chart. That's why it's weird. And you've been floundering at the low levels. Let me just take it off log for a while. So this is very, very, it's, it's an early green shoot 
in a very disproportionate chart. But God forbid you get a spike that takes you to 31% again, <laughs> or even half that, you know, 20% in terms of move, even 11, 15%, you're going to be talking a lot bigger token. And they've done the groundwork, my best understanding, and I'm not the most up to date on this, but XRP have been working really ruthlessly. You've got the likes of Rick Rule, who's more a resources guy, talking now about XRP working with yep. the central bankers and things like this. This is a guy who's, you know, gold, digging in the ground, uranium, this sort of guy. We yeah, we, we, had, we had him on the show, and he confirmed that the Bank of International Settlements was taking a huge interest into XRP and alongside the World Gold Council as far as the blockchain and you know, the World Gold Council and the Bank of International Settlements work very closely together alongside the IMF. I think this, the stage has been set for the implementation and full adoption and use case of XRP. But again, I think that's going to play out when they're ready for it to play out. And I think that will be associated with the debt mark and some of the bigger issues in the financial landscape later on down the road. Yeah, uh, Francis, you know, we had that big event recently take place the global thing with CrowdStrike, which interestingly is owned largely by some major financial institutions, for example, um, BlackRock and Vanguard, which a lot of people don't know, and some others. Um, so very interesting ties there. So we had this event take place, global outage. Do you think this was a test run? Because obviously for the last few years since 2019, the World Economic Forum, and companies, even the president, Biden, has been subtly hinting that a big attack is coming, a cyber one. And they said this clearly at the World Economic Forum in 2019, that the next one will be a cyber virus. So what are your thoughts on this? Are they leading up, the staging it, preparing? Uh, very good point. Very good question, I should say. Um, I'll just show you this for a small uh, chuckle. Due to world IT outage, we can only accept cash until further notice. How useful that makes cash. Uh, you've got your lesson right there. Uh, don't, don't forget it. They warn you there's microcosms of events that are occurring all the time, and you see the response you should have been in, cash rich. Uh, so for a bigger version of this, to me, it's almost smacks of a drill. So every major takedown typically has a drill going before it. I mean, long-term capital collapse was a drill for the subprime collapse. You essentially got, they, 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 they put the liabilities of a hedge fund onto the balance sheet of the United States government to back it, to trade their way back out of that. Uh, and they saw they got away with it. Most people didn't understand it, that they'd been used as a financial backstop and that set up the subprime. Uh, um, and 9-11, they were drilling, you know, all the stories. So uh, it's a drill for me, almost certainly. It's unlikely to be accidental. Some people say, does anything ever accidental happen in your world? Um, yes, I would say so. But in this kind of space, they all to be treated with great suspicion. So my default setting is suspicious and likely a drill. Um, what does that mean? They drill what they're going to do next. So that's, and banks are, the and the, let's be frank, we're, getting, we're in a debt collapse, guys. Mm -hmm. And the intermediation of debt is the banking system. It's fiat and debt, that's seesaw. And the intermediation of new money is the banking system. So it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like saying, you know, the, there's, railway train, the, there's railway carriages that are going to blow up, and the rails for that are the banking system. So you're going to break the railway line. You can't, if there's trains blowing up everywhere, the railway line gets broken too. So there's no question, and it's upstream. So fiat and debt is blowing up, downstream gets killed because it all comes down. And the banks are lower level intermediations. So you've got to run your balances lean. You should have more cash. You should have more gold. Um, and in that environment, many people, if crypto does still survive, there'll be a period without it. They might re-establish re some electricity, some internet or whatever. Everyone will be using it to pay because everyone will be saying, hey, you owe me and you need to pay. And the banks have gone down. So everybody will be rushing for cash. Anybody who's ever lent you something will all come asking for it at the same time. And your crypto will be emptied <laughs> out. And the it's government. And, yep. and they'll put a special levy. So you're looking for an event that somehow supersedes closing down the entire economic world that was CV-19. 
So yeah. you're going to have a similar shutting down. Only now you will not have electronic systems. Uh, you might not have the inter interweb. So never mind those buy at Amazon adverts that were essentially run as news items on your TV. You're, you're, you're going to have even a shutdown for them. So that's going to be an asset reset that everyone's going to sh crap the bed. There's going to be a dash to real yeah. money and tokenism at that point. And the only thing I want to be holding is gold, silver, uh, physical off non-electronic things. Um, and I just hope we don't all get stolen out of our crypto on our exchanges, which could all say a hack occurred while we were down. Who knows? Somebody with a battery system or some they can throw any narrative and all retail onboards or exchange systems could be destroyed. So it's a problem reaction also, solution setup. That's what yeah. I think. And this is why we always encourage people to store the digital assets on cold storage that's off the internet. So it's not susceptible to a cyber attack or any sort of thing like that. The, the CrowdStrike thing, setting the stage for a global outage, can also help accelerate the narrative of collapsing the banks and even defaulting on the debt if they want to and still point the finger to go to war. So I always look at these different perspectives and lenses because it, it does make sense and it's all converging into something like that. Um, it's interesting that my brother pointed out that BlackRock and Vanguard had a heavy investment in CrowdStrike. And I believe it's also owned by a Ukrainian individual. And I found that to be very interesting as well. None of this surprises me in the least. I can't say I've done the research on it, but none of that would surprise me in the absolute least. Uh, yeah. And that's why I say there's going to be a shock and awe on so many levels. We're all going to get caught out to some degree, I fear. Um, mm. You've got to have, that's why the best thing you have is the physical thing. Um, I'm vulnerable on the cold storage. I still have some things on exchanges. By the way, it's also the FTX payments were scheduled. Uh, just a small interesting concept because this was part of the money laundering that was Ukraine Mark 1 under the Democrats. Um, the FTX payments are only are suspected to begin to start occurring around uh, November of this year on those below 50K. The really big guys are going to be dragged into the new year. So you're going to have all of this and you have a liability that is owed and you have the possibility of what you're describing. You may never get that uh, repayment. There might be, oh, we made it available or this happened or whatever the case may be. So it's very interesting that that crypto event is also coinciding with the election and this drill on electronic is all happening. And as um, Versan was saying, it's very little that is uh, coincidence. They use the same reason to advance all agendas. Start a war, steal your money, grid down you, lock you down, impoverage, say, yeah, you have lost that, but never mind, the whole system's over. Rather than pay you out, here's UBI in the new system and hand you a, you know, a, a loss. I just want to say I agree with you, Francis and Versan, 100%. And as Versan said, and, and you agreed, Francis, you know this, uh, problem, reaction, solution, and they achieve multiple goals simultaneously. We're not talking about killing two birds with one stone. We're talking about knocking 50 dominoes with one stone, basically. Yeah. That's how they strategically plan their events um, to work in their favor. Um, but this is interesting too. So, you know, a lot of people in the space around the world say, oh no, we're not going to stand for CBDCs. People won't stand for it. And I say, well, I'm an optimistic human being by nature, but well, I don't believe that bullshit, you idiot, because in the 2020 <laughs> pandemic, 97, 90% of the world fell for the shots. Okay. And went with the bullshit <laughs> and fell for the stimulus, which was actually first given by Trump, by the way. Then Biden came in and topped it off two times. So they both contributed to the massive currency debasement. But the point is 90% of people fell for it. And how did they do it? They created a problem. They scared the living hell out of people with mainstream news and propaganda and fake doctors saying, oh, you need to do this. And people believed it. So they created a problem. People reacted. And they already had a solution, funny enough, with a patent on it. And they were warning people in 2019 <laughs> about it coming at the World Economic Forum. Um, so my point is people fell for it because people were in fear. And they manipulated people very well. So what makes people think, supposedly the people saying it, they won't accept CBDCs, 
Personally, we won't. Okay. But 90% of the people will probably have no choice, but to, they're not going to stand up and forget feeding their kids and putting food on the table to fight Mm -hmm. a system that they can't battle and win. They will go with it because they'll be in such pain and obviously manipulated just like in 2020. Um, my, my point is if they manipulated 90% of the world before they could probably do it again. That's my point. Well, not 90%, maybe a little bit less, but you're right. There is a, uh, even more divide and conquer strategy within the divide and conquer strategy that has already transpired. This also ties into the fact that there are a lot of people that believe that Trump is the savior and coming to save them. It's not to be a, uh, we, none of us are friends of the deeply, uh, aging, uh, ex-president that has an unsatisfactory and weird relationship with children and everything he does when we criticize Trump. That doesn't mean we're a Democrat. This is not a left-right thing. The one thing, I'll give you a prediction that we've kind of touched on, and then I'll sign off. Um, the prediction was, you know, Mr. Beast has suddenly started to get notified. And for those that don't know, he's the biggest YouTuber. Uh, he's got the largest channel uh, on. And if you look down who looks after him, Um, It takes you to some interesting chosen ones uh, that are clearly looking after him. Uh, And, you know, you have the algorithm on your team and you do certain stuff. And, of course, he's doing these money giveaways and it's all like supposedly a good guy, but but, but a bit of a trashy type vibe uh, going on it. But never mind. Apart from the name Beast, uh, the other interesting thing is I saw a short uh, of him being interviewed and uh, some one of the guys just opened up and said, yeah, you're doing so well. It's almost like you got Elon's um, Neuralink chip uh, in your brain. And he was like, oh, my God, I'm so having one of those uh, when they come out. And you can see like a macro influencer of great scale, largely to the a younger generation than myself. Um, and he's going, I'll let the first few thousand get out just for the bugs. And then I'm in there because you're going to make so much money. So you're going to have a guy with a pitch like that. Who's very money focused. It's all about showing loads of money, millions of dollars in bags, may have half a million for doing this and all of this. It's just, it's kind of loose and crass in its, it's in, in its money focus. It's not about lifestyle. It's not about quality. It's not about relationships. It's just money, dirty, filthy money. Um, so that, that whole thing, you're making loads of money. That's his first response. So you're going to have a lot of impoverished people potentially as a result of a demand destroying event. You're going to have a guy like him who's going to say, I'm in it, I'm doing it. They might actually ramp and pump the guys that are early uh, chip getters. By the way, they may not have real chips. They might just be fake and crowd, you know, who knows and what's real yeah. anymore in the world. And these guys will go, wow, I made so much money. I, I, I can borrow a hundred grand. I turned it into a million. I'd never have done it if I didn't have the super AI chip that was just teaching me how I best fill in a loan form and how I can make, turn a hundred grand into 500 grand. They might be speculating. They might become poker stars. They might become anything. I've just taken me to the next level and what they're going to do. And and all these guys are going to rich. They're going to flaunt it, bling, bling, kind of like Mr. Beast typey things on his show where he's showing loads of cash. They'll be driving Lambos and all of this stuff. And what you're going to get is they're going to create hype about there's not enough available. There's not enough available. The oversubscribe model, um, you know, get in a queue and sorry, we can't, you know, all of this. And they're going to create this kind of marketing hustle where the lucky early adopters are suddenly becoming this mini Uber class. uh, And they're eventually going to get people lining up like they lined up for the shot. They're going to get them to line up. So that you're begging uh, for it. It only they only had to offer you burgers and cokes on the tail end when nobody was lining up anymore. That comes later. And what you'll actually get is that you may also get different versions. Like I say, you may get a fake version and something that's totally manufactured for a holden group of people that are all essentially stage actors and part of the game. You're going to get these influencers with these huge gazillion watched uh, YouTubes that are going to be right in there and they're saying, this has taken me to the next level. And you're going to get people actually lining up for possibly a chip that won't be the same as whatever someone else got before. That's a prediction I'm here to make. They are going to sell that brilliantly. I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be far harder for you than you think, because these guys are expert marketeers. They are excellent hype creators. They are excellent momentum creators, and most people chase momentum. It's a bit like being an OG in Bitcoin in 2010 and 2011. 
Once they create that pump omega thing, everybody wants in crypto. It no longer was about liberty, freedom, you're different to banks. Hold on, BlackRock's running the ETF. When did you escape? This is the guy you guys are busy pointing out is the controlling entity of most equities that engage, probably running drills on CrowdStrike, uh, currently ESG driver, transgenderism, everything cultural Marxist, DEI in uh, airline pilots, you name it, everything is being driven <laughs> by an over-domineering, undiversified board that is totally one particular profile that is all doing this. So when did it, when did it stop being about liberty and it's just pump my bags? Because that's what it becomes. <laughs> and I, I use the analogy when we used to have kids' parties. I don't know if this is just a crazy South African thing. But, you know, you would cut the sweet bag open if it was your birthday. And you would stand and you would, like, do a scramble. It was called scramble. And you used to shout scramble. And you would wave the sweet bag open. And the sweets would just chuck out. And all the kids would just go, whoa. And they'd be climbing all over each other, grabbing uh, a sweet. And I can see the scramble for wanting to be a Bitcoin OG, the scramble to want to be the made to become rich, Neuralink chip that's going to make you super smarter. You take the call in your brain, you touch here and all of this fancy gimmickry, just like everyone scrambled for a Tesla when Leonardo DiCaprio ran for one, uh, but he probably doesn't drive it very often. But when he needed to show up at the Oscars, he drove in one, et cetera, et cetera. So the fools will be fooled every time because they respond emotionally without principle. They are not based on principles. They are based on greed and they will be given the greed narrative and they will rush in. And they will not remember that known liars always lie consistently. Known deceivers are deception game artists. And that even if you grew up with it echoing in your head not to take that damn thing, they will get motivated to do it. And they yeah. will do it. And that's a prediction on how they will market this chip. And it may not be as far off as you think it is uh, away uh, in terms of it. So I watch everyone to watch it. And everybody who got half truth on CV19 only six, nine months afterwards is busy saying there was a legit attempt on Trump's life, on a lone gunman, Patsy shot dead narrative. And I'm saying the people that hated me on Crypto Sniper for saying it ain't the way it is. And that uh, unfollowed evil. How can you say it? Wait for the facts. Facts from whom? Exactly. Who do you think you're going to get the facts from? You're yeah. going to get mainstream media's facts. I'm looking at the template and saying probability based game. This follows all the usual templates of what typically goes on. That means the outcome is designed to be that way. They are successful. They don't run unsuccessful things. Um, they have all the tools in the armory. They've been doing this for a long time. You underestimate your enemy. The popularity that is going to lead to Trump, and that's going to be a bitter pull for many people on the right. And watch out for those brain chips. Watch out for everything. It's a dangerous old world. But within that, escape the psyop, take action, have freedom, live your life. You are born for these times because you can cope for it. You've been given a challenge. Gamify. Try be a man of principle to your last breath in terms of these things. Try help others to see and act it out. Build wealth, but not for money's sake, for freedom's sake. We're not scrambling like kids after sweets and, and Mr. Beast who will fawn for big notes loosely thrown around. We are just want a good existence to experience an amazing life. Your relationships, your friends, the people that love and trust you are way worth uh, all this fiat money. And if you see that value, we are the reset sniper, the crypto sniper, and the market sniper. We want to help you survive what is unique reset-based economy for which all old economies are bad training for. This is a transition period. And you need to be different. And you need to really think of all the ways they will undo you. And some will work. And that's all you will need in what will mm -hmm. come in because a major reflation has to occur with a major deflation. There's opportunity in crisis. The word in Chinese is crisis and opportunity. And that's <laughs> what we're about. We want to Love show it. you that opportunity. And on that note, if you wish to engage, go to the YouTube channel, Francis Hunt. That's the market sniper or the crypto sniper. Uh, you want to hear reset content. It's harder for me nowadays. I don't do it as often. I talk uh, on shows like this. Um, go to our website at themarketsniper.com. Uh, and book a call. Uh, we're here to help you through this process, and it's a big old game.
It's true. Francis, it has been an absolute pleasure. As always, our discussions are very fascinating. And I just want to thank you for all the time and energy that you're dedicating in getting this message out there just to help people navigate through all the noise. Your insights are invaluable. But to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to follow us on X, subscribe to our YouTube channels, and share this message if you can. People do need to hear this. There are not a lot of channels out there that are having these open discussions like we do, and they're not filtering out all the nonsense and noise from all the other sources. And I'm going to leave it on that. I do have another call in like 10 minutes here. All right, everyone take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Francis. Appreciate it. Bye-bye, guys.